Welcome to basic power system analysis using PSSE. In this lecture, we are going to perform short circuit analysis on the network we have already modeled. So in the previous video, what we did was we modeled everything required for the short circuit analysis. So now it's time to perform actual analysis on PSSE. The first thing is that one of the most common method used in the industry nowadays for uh, performing short circuit analysis is IEC 60909. So PSSE provide us with the ability to perform short circuit analysis using the same method apart from its own internal method as well. So in our in uh, our course we will be performing short circuit analysis using the same IEC 60909 method. So how it is done? Before starting the analysis, we need to adjust some things in PSSE so that we can get the results in our form. So for this, we can adjust uh, the parameters, uh, how, what kind of results I want. For this, you can go to miscellaneous, you can go to change program settings. In this settings, you are going to find that your eg existing short circuit output is in per unit form. So let us go and convert this into physical form because we want our results to be in amperes or kilo amperes rather than per unit because we do not want to convert the results ourselves. We want PSSE to convert the results for us. And the second option we are going to select is short circuit coordinates. I want my short circuit coordinates to be in polar form because I am more interested in the magnitude of the fault current rather than its distribution in form of R plus J X or I plus J. That is why I'll be using polar coordinates. So once I'm done with this, I'm going to press OK. My settings have been changed. Now to perform actual analysis, let us select a bus. In PSSE, analysis can be performed on the whole system at once or a certain bus. How you can do that if you go to fault IEC 60909 fault calculation and click on this you get this option. So if we see this option in this dialog box there are so many options. First what type of fault do you want to model? Usually for the system studies the two important faults for us are the two extremes the three phase fault and the line to ground fault. So if we uh, calculate the short circuit for these two we will be covering the remaining fault as well. For the output option, we have several options. The first option is fault current table summary. This is go going to give you the summary of the fault currents. Total fault current will only give you the fault current. I double dash K contribution to N level away. This is going to give you the summary of the fault current and as well as what is the contribution from different buses coming to it. And the last option is going to give you total fault current as well as the contribution. So it depends what is your requirement. Do you want to see only the fault current? If you are more interested in fault current, then you can go with the fault summary or the total fault currents. But if you are interested to see how much contribution is coming from each and every equipment, then you can select this option or this option. For now, I'm going to go with this fault current summary option. So the fault location is network bus. So we are going to go ahead and select network bus. Shunt option, I want, I am only interested in the short circuit current which is happening due to the total resistance and reactance in the network. So that is why I am going to select set shunts to zero in positive sequence. If there is any shunt equipment because shunt equipment is going to reduce my short circuit calculation current. I want the worst case scenario. For the worst case scenario, I am reducing I am not going to consider anything that is in the shunt. Similarly, for the line charging, I am setting my line, line charging to zero in the positive sequence. So this is the same thing. Now the next thing is apply. What about the tap ratios of the transformers? So wherever I have adjusted some tap ratios, but since I am interested in the fault current based on the actual network, so I'm going to set the tap ratios to unities. 
I am going to select set tap ratios to unity because I want for my transformers to give me the reactance as per the actual nameplate rating rather than some other calculated value based on the tap. Similarly, I am going to uncheck represent DC lines because we do not have DC lines or loads and uh, we usually do not consider them in the short circuit analysis. So I am going to uncheck this. Apply transformer impedance correction to zero sequence. I, I, I do not want any correction to be implemented to my reactance value. So I am going to select whatever is the actual reactance value for the positive sequence as well as the zero sequence. That is why I am using this option. So now the number of levels back for the contribution, this option comes handy when you are using n levels away. Since I am not using n level away, I want my contribution just for the bus I am calculating the fault current on. And then the breaker contact parting time, breaker contact parting time is actually the time in which the breaker will open. You remember when we uh, wanted to calculate this uh, DC current, we wanted this asymmetrical current and for the asymmetrical current, we wanted that how much DC component will be there because the total current asymmetrical current is the combination of the IDC as well as IAC. So depending upon the breaker type and the breaker rating, you can select this value. You can get this either get this value from the manufacturer of the uh, circuit breaker or you can use some value provided in the criteria for extra high voltages or uh, we usually use two cycles but for high voltages like 132 kV or lower we usually use three cycles as contact uh, breaking time so let me go so this is my zero so this will be my first cycle second cycle and three cycle. So I'm considering three cycle, the contact breaker parting time of 0 0.05 seconds. Also, I want is the maximum fault current. IC609, IC609090 says that you can calculate the value at different values. But for the, what will be the worst case scenario? First case scenario will be V is equal to IR or I is equal to V by R or V by Z. So now if we have higher value of voltages, then we will have higher value of current. So this way, if I select maximum for, if I want to get the maximum fault current, I need to select maximum voltage. So what will be my maximum voltage? My maximum possible voltage as per my criteria can be up to 10% of the equipment rating. So that is why I am going to select, when I select this maximum fault current, what I am actually doing is I am selecting V to be 1.1 per unit. So for 132 kV, this voltage is going to be 132 multiplied by 1.1. You can select some minimum value also for minimum. Usually PSSC select the value of one per unit. And if you want some specified value, your own personal value, you want a certain value, then you can calculate this also. So as I said, you can calculate for the all buses or you can calculate for certain areas or certain owners or certain buses, then you can select this. Now I'm going to perform short circuit analysis for just one bus. In my case, I want to perform the short circuit analysis for bus number 101. Why? Because it is a a uh, good way to understand what happens in the short circuit because it will have contribution from this generator and similarly from this generator as well. So, and I'm going to calculate for the three phase and the line to ground, single line to ground. So let me select here one zero one. I just gave the bus number here. You could have selected all buses. Once you are working on it and uh, getting some experience, so it is good that you uh, uh, check with the different options. So here I am going to go with 101 and when I press OK, go, I have some values here. So I just close it and you see it has given me some data. So as I said, so number one, the short circuit had been performed using IC60909 short circuit calculation method. This is the heading one and two. When we were preparing the case, this is what uh, they show us. So this is why I said that in order to just get the idea for which case or which condition you are performing on this analysis, this is going to become here. So the options which I selected are given here. 
and the value calculated for bus 01 is 4925 amperes. This is the total three phase fault current and for the line to ground fault current is 5240 or 5.2 kilo ampere. Whereas my voltage factor considered is the maximum which is 1.1. So this value is based on 1.1. So let us perform the same analysis again, but with some different option. So I will go again to fault to IC60909. And instead of summary, let me get total currents. So I want to see what is happening on what are the different currents, the asymmetrical, the breaking current, the DC current, the AC current. So I want to see everything what is happening in the system. So for this, let me select total fault currents. Same, I'm going to use for 101 bus and when I press go, I'll press 0. Now, this time I am getting a more detailed result. So now to study this detailed result, let us just copy this result from here like this. Right click, copy and paste it on a notepad. So let us select the notepad. And there you go. I will just paste these values and here are the results. So let us discuss the results now. So what do we have? The same thing, the heading, what type of short circuit analysis I have performed, what are the options I have used, all the options are given here, the voltage factor which I used because since I used um, a maximum fault current, so there, therefore C or the voltage factor has been used as 1.1. The frequency of the system is 60 hertz. The contact breaking time I selected is provided here because I did not change this time. Last time I changed it to 0 0.05. This time I wasn't able to change it. So that is why it is showing this. You can use it with the different value. When you are going to change this value, you are going to see the change here. And this is where you are going to see the change because this is the asymmetrical current. Your asymmetrical current and your DC current is going to change with respect to this value. The longer the time you consider, the lower will be the value. The higher you time you consider, the higher will be the value. So let us see whether this value changes or not. So let me go back here. Once again, perform fault. IC60909. Same thing. Let us calculate for 1, 101 and go, go. I have another report generated here. So again, I am going to copy this report from here come here and see the change in the DC current and the change in the symmetrical current my asymmetrical current has actually increased because I selected a short contact breaking time with a short contact breaking time what is happening my DC current is has not subdued yet it is still has a higher value as far as the other things are concerned they will not be changed the so here we go so what do we have here so the different information we are getting here is number one what is the short circuit mva for this case my three phase short circuit mva is around 1126 my line to ground short circuit mva is around 1198 whereas the short circuit current for uh, three phase is 4.9 kilo ampere and for line to ground is 5.2 kilo ampere and then I have this uh, IB, IC, different uh, type of fault current, then my DC current, then my symmetrical current, then my asymmetrical current. So I'm getting different values here, which you can check based on IC60909. Similarly, the Thevenin impedance. This is the impedance when we were uh, 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 when we were discussing that uh, how this short circuit is calculated. So PSSC is here telling you that at the point of fault, this was the impedance I was able to calculate. So my current values given here are based on these things. So I have this positive sequence impedance, negative sequence impedance, zero sequence impedance in the form of this is the magnitude and this is the angle. So you can go ahead and you can convert them back, back into R plus JX also because this is in polar. You can convert them into rectangular coordinates and 5.41 is the X by R ratio. So it is also important to know the X by R ratio because especially this X by R ratio affects your asymmetrical current. So this is how you calculate short circuit current and you get the results for it.